Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. And thank you for tuning in to a brand new episode of The Right Now Word. I'm so glad to have you guys with me on tonight for this awesome brand new episode of The Right Now Word. It's been a wonderful four months into 2024. The Lord has been good to me. I pray the same for you. Do me a favor before we begin. On this new episode of the Right Now Word, do me a favor, call somebody, email somebody, text somebody, DM somebody, and let them know that Dr. Dolores T. Henderson is right here, right now on the Right Now Word. Right here, right now on the Right Now Word. This is going to be a brief episode. I just come to greet you and to check on you and to give you a quick Right Now Word. But before I get started, I want to thank all of the nominees and all of the guests that attended the office ball and awards dinner. The ball was immaculate. It was epic. It was amazing. It was the first one and I'm telling you, it was packed. It was powerful. It was packed and it was powerful. It was profound, my friends. And I am praying that you guys get to come next year right here in Washington, Washington DC, the a ball, the ball and awards dinner was amazing. I want to congratulate those winners. I'm telling you guys that God has made you a promise and he has kept that promise that he is a promise keeping God. When I told you that he cannot lie, he should not lie. He proved it to you on March the 23rd. He proved to you who he was for those who have been overlooked, who have been and Ms. Handel, who have not been treated well, who have not been promoted, who have not been recognized or celebrated, you had your moment at the Authors Awards Ball and Dinner. So I'm excited. I want to congratulate again those winners, those winners and all the nominees. It is such a blessing to be nominated for a great body of work. And so for all the nominees that were nominated for all the winners, again, I congratulate you. I want to do a shout out to all of the entertainers and all the guests that travel near and who travel far, those who travel out um, travel from other countries. I want to thank you for thinking it not robbery to come and spend the wonderful evening with us at the Authors Ball and Awards Dinner. I want to get straight into this word. I'm not going to be before you guys long on tonight, but I just want to quickly tell you what was spoken to me in my spirit. And the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to tell them, do it and do it now. He said, do it and do it now. Some of you have been thinking about starting a business, starting a ministry, starting a network, writing a book, doing something wonderful and impactful. God simply told me to tell you to do it and do it now. He took me to the scripture. He said, now faith, now, I'm telling you right now, faith, what it is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Some of you have not started because you feel like you don't have the funds to get started. He said, I need you to do it and do it now. I need you to do it and trust me for, trust me for the overflow. Some of you have been pondering because the decision you have to make may very well rough the feathers of people that, are, that you hold near and dear to you. God said, told me to tell you, you're the one he gave the vision to. You're the one who he has prepared to go forth and do this mighty work. He said, do it and do it. Now he said, you've been positioned and you have been postured for greatness. He said, he said, he delights in them that diligently seek him. He rewards them that continuously, and I want to make sure I give it to you as he gave it to me. He said, 
I reward them that continue on the path of a faith-filled life. He said, who seeks after me and who seeks after me with their whole heart, he said, and looks to him for guidance and for direction. He said, neither stumble nor do they turn back. But keep going and keep marching and keep on believing. He told me to tell you, he said, do it and do it now. He said, abide. Those who have abided in my presence. He said, I take, take refuge in me because I take refuge in you. He said, I need you to rest in me because I'm resting. I want you to know that it is me who have been resting in you and sometimes stretching in you and who have been stretching you so that you can go forth and do this great body of work that I have placed in your heart, that I have the vision I have placed in your thought, that I have placed in your mind. He said, it is me, the Lord, who has given you. He said, not just write the vision and make it plain, but you have to get up and do something about it now. I talked a little bit about seasons. And yes, there's a such thing as a waiting season. He told me to tell you that this is not that this is not the waiting season for my people. This is the season for my people to go forth and do it. This is the season for my people to go after it. This is the season for my people to grab hold of it. This is the season for my people to blossom, to expand, to enlarge their territories. This is the season for my people to get all that I have told them that I was going to give them, but they have to get up and go get it. Get up and go after it. Get up and do something about it. He said, this is not the waiting season. Now is not the time to wait, but now is the time to do it and do it now. Now is not the time to ponder about it, but now is the time to do it and do it now. I was thinking about the father of faith, Abraham, and how when God told him to do something so that sounds so ridiculous to not just probably him, but anybody who read it, he said, I want you to leave the familiar, get away from what is familiar. And I want you to go somewhere that is unfamiliar, that 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 you wouldn't even think that I'm, I'm going to see you. Matter of fact, I'm not going to even tell you. I just want you to obey and get up and go. And once you start walking, then I will direct your path. He said, because I direct the paths. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He said, when you get up and go, I will begin. Matter of fact, I've already ordered your steps. I just need you to get up and walk towards where I am taking you. Amen. So Abraham, he, Abram was his name. Then he got up and he, and he listened to the voice of the Lord and he began to walk. And because of his faith, because of him not even knowing what God really wanted him to do or wanted him to go, but he just heard one voice. His act of obedience was to get up and go. And he got up and he went, he got up and he went and just went forth and just started walking. And that's when God began to speak to him and tell him what a rest that would a go at. Amen. Glory to God. And because of his faith, that he became the father of faith. He became the father of many nations. He became a great faith and a great man of God. Amen. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes the things that God tell us to do doesn't sound like it could be God. It doesn't sound familiar. It doesn't sound sound. It doesn't sound logical, but don't you know that we serve a God that is not that, that, that th he thinks out of the box. He doesn't think logically. He, he takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise the thing that look foolish to man that's the thing that he take amen and he and he he pulls it to and then he allows it to to grow and flourish and blossom amen so that he can get the glory amen and so the god that we serve he take the small things the little things the things that look foolish to man the things that look like that this is no way, no how God, those the things that he is in, amen, so that he can get the glory out of it and that he can get the glory out of your life. And so tonight, I just simply come to tell you to do it and do it now. Don't wait another minute. 
Don't wait another moment. This is not your waiting season. Yes, I know somebody is saying, I'm probably saying, I'm going to wait on the Lord. God said, if you waited long enough, I've already gave you the commandment to move forward. I've already gave you the commandment to go and possess. I've already given you the commandment to go and pursue. He said, this is not the time. You, It is important that you know the times and the seasons. Amen. He said, it is important that you understand that you understand and that you're able to discern the times and the seasons. He said, because I'm a God of time and season. He meaning that I move in seasons and I'm not um, controlled by man's calendar, but I'm, but I move by my own spirit. He said, I am a spirit and those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And in the spirit, a lot of things that God is asking us to do spiritually, amen, doesn't sound right, doesn't look right in the carnal. Because in the carnal, in our minds, it has to be perfect. It has to look this way. It has to talk this way. It has to be this way. It has to line up. And God said, I, he said, I promote and I am in things that look impossible. I promote and I am in things that people think that can't get done. He said, that's why I'm God. That's why I'm sovereign. That's why I, I am the maker. I remember God telling somebody who tried to question him, who tried to ask him why he did certain things. And he told him, he said, let me remind you who I am. He said, I'm God. I'm the creator. You're the creature. I do what I do. And I swear by my own name. So the things that God is trying to tell you to do, matter of fact, is telling you to do the things that you're trying to understand if it's God, it may sound foolish because to the carnal ear, it sounds foolish, but to a great God, somebody hear me on tonight, I said, but to a great God, the God that look up high, that God that sit up high and look down low, the God from everlasting to everlasting, you already know what I'm going to say, he's the unmovable mover, the unshakable shaker, he knows all things, amen, because he is omnipotent, he is omniscient, my friends, he knows all things, he is all powerful powerful and he is present every single place. I'm telling you that you don't have to wait your turn any longer that go after it, do it and do it now and watch God bless you. Watch God change it. Watch God turn it around. Watch God heal it. Watch God multiply. Watch God prosper it. Watch God do it. But you got to take a step and you got to do it and do it now. Not wait another day. Not wait another moment. But get up and do it and do it now. I come I come tonight to stir up somebody's faith. I come tonight to let you know that faith without works is dead. You got to get up and do it and do it now. You cannot wait and think that it's going to drop out of the sky. You cannot wait and think that it's just going to come to you. No, you got to get up and do it and do it now. I was just thinking about a time where um, I had to counsel someone and that person and that person um, said that um, they was told to wait. And I said, okay, all right. So they were waiting. And then like two weeks later, they came to me crying, saying that the thing had passed them. And I said, well, you know, when God speaks, you got to move. And I'm not the one that's going to but um, Bible bump you over the head. My job is to give you the word. And I'm obedient to God when he tells me to give you the word and I release it. Whether you receive it, whether you do what I, what God is telling you to do, that's between you and God. But you will know and you will see that it was God who spoke to you when that thing passed you by. I come to tell somebody on tonight, don't let that be you. Don't let it pass you by. Don't let yourself wake up five years from now and you see that it was God who spoke to you. It was God who told you to do it. This is not the time to live in regret. All your past mistakes, all your regrets, this night on tonight. God has cleansed you and has forgiven you. It's time for you to move and it's time for you to move forward. Some of you need to be networking and partnering and collaborating and partnershiping with some folk. God already showed you who you need to connect with, who you need to network with, who you need to partnership with. God said, do it and do it now. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about what people are going to say. If God said, do it, 
I say do it. All this week, I have the Spirit of the Lord has been speaking to me, and I just simply be saying, I believe God. I don't know about you once tonight, but I believe God for the impossible. I believe God for something that don't even look like it's going to happen. I believe God that don't even for something that does, doesn't even look like it's present. You got to be in a posture. He said, the Lord's tell them those who seek after me diligently pressing pushing he said those who i reward i reward them that diligently seek me no matter what no matter what come no matter who goes no matter what it look like in the carnal eyes he said remind them that the carnal is death remind them but to walk in the spirit to believe by faith to walk in the spirit to live in the spirit is life everlasting life and it's peace i'm just thinking about the prophet I'm thinking about the prophet and the dry bones. I'm thinking about when he saw those 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 bones, those dead bones, and and in the carnal how they looked, and in the carnal they looked like it was no breath that they would never be able to get up, that them, them they would never be able to ever talk again, to breathe again, to move again. In the carnal he came up and saw a valley of dead bones, dead bones, no meat. The ants, the the the, the insects don't eat up all the meat. And nothing but bones dead dried up stinky nothing could come out of it it was all dried up it was a dry brook that looked like never gonna come out of it. it was gonna ever be anything and God told him he said man of God what do you see and he told God what he saw and what he saw and God said what do you believe what do you think what do you think can they live and and, and, and God told him he said you tell me can they live I'm asking you so tonight I'm telling you on tonight do you believe that you can live do you believe that you can win? Do you believe that you can make it? Do you believe that you could triumph? Do you believe that you could be the, the a multi-millionaire? Do you believe your family could be saved? Do you believe that your family members could be delivered? Do you believe that your sons and daughters were prophesied and your and your uncles and your old grandpas were dream dreams? Do you believe that your entire family, your entire household will be saved. Do you believe that every person from generation from this point on will be prosperous and multi-millionaires, billionaires? Do you believe that God can heal you of that uncurable disease? Do you believe that God can heal you from HIV AIDS? That God can heal you from cancer? That God can heal you from heart issues, heart disease? That God can heal you from bone diseases, back pain? Do you believe God God, or do you believe you? Do you believe the doctor's report? Do you believe what the doctors are saying? Do you believe what the bill collectors are saying? Who do you believe? He told him, he said, man of God, speak. I come to you tonight and I tell you to speak. Speak to your situation. Speak to wherever you're at in your life. And if you feel like you're not where you're supposed to be, not just speak, but get up and do it, something about it. Get up and do something about it and do it and do it now. God is blessing his people all over. I'm in, I'm in awe of the blessings of the Lord because the people that God has been blessing and you see an overflow in their life, those are the ones who have walked out on faith, who have walked according to faith, who got up and did something about it, didn't complain, didn't murmur, didn't blame anybody for their mishaps, but they decided, they decided that they was going to get up and change their lives. Get up and change how they was living. Get up so that God can get the glory out of them. My friends, I just simply come to tell you on tonight, do it and do it now. Now it's not the time to wait. And I just keep hearing in my spirit that some people, even after they hear this message, somebody going to say, I'm waiting on God. And that has been your declaration for a long time. And God said, I gave them the commandment to move. You know what I'm about to say. And if you are not encouraged by this story, one of my favorites, and I talk about it all the time. You've heard it on the Right Now Word all the time. I am moved by the story of David when he came back from battle and his all and he and his men, their wives were gone, everything was gone. 
And David had to encourage himself in the Lord his God because he was depressed because everybody thought about stoning him. And he said, God, where are you? I did what you told me to do. I obeyed what you told me. I went out and I fought. Come back, God, what's going on? The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. But not just that. He did something. He prayed. He prayed. And he waited for the answer, but he didn't wait 50 years for the answer. He he heard God. His ear was attentive to the voice of the Lord in knowing when God say move, move. It was a, it's very important and timing is very important that you do it in the timing of God. Meaning that if God speak to you and say get up and do it now, it's important that you do it right then. You can't wait and hear God say um, get up and do it now and you wait five weeks or three months from now and do it. No, because if God telling you to get up and do it now, it's because he's already prepared the way for you to go and for you to prosper in those steps that he's ordered for you. And it's a reason why he's telling you to do it now, because if you wait three months from now, that opportunity is not going to be there again. So going back to the story, David, one of my favorites, my friends, you got to read it. If that's the only scripture, you know, read it over and over to help you get up and pursue. He said he, the Bible says he prayed and he asked God, God, what's the plan? What we going to do about this thing? You know, I can sit here and cry. I can sit here and, and moan and groan and lick my wounds all day long. But I believe you, God. I believe that, Father, that you allowed this to happen for a reason. So what I'm going to do is the God of all creation. The God that created the heaven, the God that created the earth, the God that created me, the God that know all things, the God that sit up high and look down low, the God of everlasting to everlasting. I know that you know, my God, what's next for me. So I'm going to ask you, what's the plan? What do I do? Should I go after it? Should I go after the truth? Should I pursue this truth? And God said, yes, go after it. Pursue the truth. And not only that, you're going to recover. But not only are you going to recover, you're going to recover it all. And the Bible says not only did he recover it all, but he got more. My goodness. Now, what had he, what, as if he would have waited? What if he would have waited after God told him to move forward? Maybe he would have got a little bit of it back, but he wouldn't have gotten it all and more. The Bible says not only did he get all of it back, but he got more than what he lost. I come to prophesy to somebody on tonight and to tell you that what you lost, God is going to give you something better and greater. And you're going to get more than what you lost. You're going to get more, if whether that's finances, you're going to get more than the finances you lost. You're going to get more. God is going to come into your life and not just give it, give you that, but he's going to make you whole in every area of your life. You may be crying over a lost one. God is going to give you a better person. No, sometimes we cannot ever replace what people that we lost, but God will give you somebody and bring somebody into your life that will take the pain, help take the pain away, that will take the loneliness away. Somebody open up your heart because God said he's going to, you're about to love again. You're about to love again. You're about to laugh again. You're about to be happy again. God said, just open up your heart. He said, I got that person right for you. Receive. They're right in front of your face. Receive it. I come to tell somebody that you may have lost sums of money going in the pandemic going through the, the pandemic and you've lost a job or you lost your business or your church, um, the people in your church left or, and they never came back. I come to tell you that God is going to give you, is going to download to you a vision that's going to restore that portion of your life as if they never, ever left. God is going to give you creative and innovative ideas to be able to to make up for what that which was lost. Amen. Which which that that had left. God is about to give you a, a vision. He's about to drop down some, some visions and some instructions for you to write down. And once he does that, he wants you to get up and do it. Do it and do it now. Somebody, I'm telling you, you felt like because you've been sick for a long time that you weren't able to experience the joys of life. But God said tonight, 
He has healed your body. According to Isaiah 53, 5, 1 Peter 2, 24, the Bible says by his stripes you are healed. Heal me on tonight by the blood of the Lamb, by the power of the Holy Ghost. God said that you are healed, you are delivered, and you are set free by his power, by the blood of the Lamb. Now rise up and walk. Pick up your pick up his cross and follow him. But some of you, God wants you to not only to pick up the cross, but he wants you to pick up those entrepreneurial books, pick up that mission and vision for that business, pick up that vision for that church, pick up that vision for the marketplace and work it and work it and work it and work it until you can't work it no more. He said, do it and do it now. I come to tell somebody on tonight that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us his love. He has given us his power and he, my friends, has given us a sound mind. There's no need to worry. There's no need to doubt. The God that we serve does not specialize in confusion. He is not the author of confusion, but he's the author of our faith. He is the author of our faith. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end, and he is the author. He authors our faith, meaning he does not offer confusion. So where there is confusion, I just simply ask that you pull down our stronghold, pull down that stronghold of confusion and look yourself in the mirror and say self get up and do it and do it now self get up and build it and build it now self get up be healed and be healed now self get up be motivated and be motivated now self get up be encouraged and be encouraged now self get up and prosper and be prosperous now because he has given you the power, my friends, to get the wealth. He has given you the tools. He has given you the power and he has given you the dominion. Dominate and dominate now. Win and win now. Prosper and prosper now. Right now, tonight. Let tonight be the beginning of a new chapter of your life. For we've been made endure for a night but joy my friends come in the morning i come to tell you that tonight is your morning of joy tonight is your morning of joy get up do some cartwheels and flips get up and rejoice in the lord your god get up and praise god get up and praise his holy name because my friends he's about to do great exploits in your life this is your season this is your time this is your season to win and win like never before i come to tell somebody get ready every single day you're going to hear congratulations 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 somebody get up get ready when you go to your next doctor's appointment the doctor gonna say i don't know what happened but it ain't there no more somebody get up Get up and hear me. Your child that's been wondering, they're going to come knocking on your door and say, Mama, Daddy, I love you. Help me. What must I do to be saved? Somebody hear me. That pastor who's been praying for your church to grow. Hear me on tonight. This is the last night that you that that would be your prayer. God said it has been answered. I have answered you, and the answer is yes. Somebody that's been walking the floor at night, not knowing what to do about a relationship. God told me to tell you, do it and do it now. Move forward and move forward in it now. He said I'm bringing it together for my plan and my purpose. Do it and do it now. I'm so excited about the plan and the purpose and the promise that God has for your life. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. But my friends, you got to walk in the spirit of obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Any sacrifice that you think you're doing, I want you to know that there's something that tops sacrifice, and that's obedience. Obedience to the purpose and the plan that God has for your life, even if it look ridiculous, even if it sounds like this is a joke. I come to tell you, it's not a joke. It's real. And it's very real. It's very real for your life. And I'm telling you, your decision to do it and do it now, and your decision not to do it and do it now will affect the next generation. Don't be the one that's the cause of the next generation not prospering. Believe the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Obey the word of the Lord and do it and do it now. You've been listening to the Right Now Word. God bless you and you have a good night.